All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me um, at uh, the Residence Block Association meeting tonight. Uh, my name is Eric Wilson. I am the new Assistant Commissioner of Planning um, at the Department of Housing, Preservation, and Development. Um, I have been there for three weeks now, and I'm joining us from Detroit, Michigan, um, which of course has quite a few housing issues. I'm sure you've heard on your own. Um, Tonight I'm here to talk about Housing New York, um, which is a plan that has been released about a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago now, um, by the de Blasio administration um, and by Deputy Mayor Alicia Glenn. Um, and Housing in New York is kind of like a guide um, for my department, Department of Housing Preservation Development, Department of City Planning, and the Economic Development Corporation. We kind of all act together as economic development agencies for the city, and housing development agencies for the city. Um, and it's kind of a blueprint for how we're going to produce affordable housing in the city um, for the next you know, five, you know, for 10 years to come, well beyond um, this administration. Um, I wanted to clarify that um, I, the Department of Housing Preservation and Development is different from the New York City Housing Authority. Um, the New York City Housing Authority is the agency that runs our um, public housing um, that we have for the city, um, which is a very important housing supply for a large, large population of the city. It's, it's one of, it is the largest public housing agency in the country. Um, my organization, HPD, builds housing for a more variety of incomes. So while we also target very low income, we also target moderate income um, housing, especially for workforce um, populations, uh, police officers, firemen, teachers, um, folks, um, family of three averaging you know, between 35,000 a year up to 98,000 a year is sort of the area that we target. So just so you have that in mind. Um, also, to set a little bit of context here, um, the, the, the Housing New York plan doesn't have any active projects in Woodbridge. Um, in Queens, most of our work is going on in Flushing, Long Island City, um, the Rockaways, um, and we have a little bit in Astoria as well, the majority of our projects. Um, some, some preservation projects here, and I'll explain what that means, um, but the majority of new construction projects are in those locations. Your neighboring community to, the, to East New York, um, to the west of you, um, is, um, there has been a rezoning proposed, um, and I can talk a little bit about what that means um, for that community over there. All right, to dive into this, um, let me see if I can get this to work. Okay, so Housing New York is a comprehensive plan to build and preserve 200,000 units of high quality affordable housing. And really the idea here is, like I said, to focus on New Yorkers with a range of incomes, low incomes up to moderate incomes. And our goal here is to create real communities that don't just have one type of socioeconomic group, it's a mix. Uh, that's really what our goal is here uh, in providing housing. Um, and so we used, a, uh, in order to create this plan, a lot of folks participated. We had a lot of folks, there's very active housing advocacy groups, tenants' rights associations, um, people who are um, really, really very vocal about how we should advance housing and, and housing issues in New York City. Um, borough presidents participated, city council um, participated. Um, the Real Estate Board of New York, so we wanted to get the developer side as well, because after all, we depend on developers to build our new housing in New York. Um, and then supportive housing providers, the very special needs that we have for senior housing, um, housing for recovering people, and um, that kind of stuff. Um, 13 agencies participated, you know, I mentioned me, this is our agency here, Housing Preservation Development, and a variety of other agencies. And the reason why we included all these people is to make sure that the plan is financially feasible and has broad support as city policy to move forward. Um, okay, so I want to tell you a little bit why. Why is the de Blasio administration so focused on affordable housing? Um, and these are reasons why. Um, and I'll get into it, it, each of these, but there's been a, a large gap between what people earn and what they pay in rent. And this gap has been increasing recently over, over the past several years. 
there's a high rent burden. So by rent burden, I mean by people who spend 30% or more of their income monthly for rent. That means your rent burden. You're paying a lot of your income towards rent. Um, there's not enough housing production that we have in New York City. Demand is outpacing supply, and you know the basic economics rules are that when demand outpaces supply, prices go up. Um, and that's a problem that we're having here. There's a limited supply specifically of affordable units. Um, so we see a lot of the new construction taking place um, in many parts of the city, but this new construction is really luxury construction. It's, it's very, it's expensive housing. It's not really targeted towards middle-income people. Much of it, not all of it. Um, and we're having population growth. So New York City, because we're successful, um, unlike my city where I came from, in Detroit, um, New York City is gaining population, and people are moving here for economic opportunity, all sorts of people, at many different income bands. And this, of course, puts even more pressure on our housing supply. Um, so it's because of all of these reasons why we thought that, or why my predecessors thought, we really have to figure out what to do. And that's what this plan is intended to address. Um, so I was talking about rent burden, or I'm sorry, I was talking about um, rent increasing at a pace faster than incomes. And this chart explain, or illustrates that, where between 2010 and 2012, you see this especially happening. And this was exacerbated by the recession, um, but we're still seeing these trends where costs of housing in New York City are increasing at a rate greater than most people's incomes. <coughs> and this is rent burden. Um, this illustrates, so the darker color, um, these stacked charts here, the darker color represents rent burdened households. So households that are spending more than 30% of their income on rent. Um, and then, then the red illustrates people who are considered severely rent burdened. Severely rent burdened is when you're spending 50% of your income on rent, 50% or less. So 30% um, or less, or 30% and 50%. Um, so you can see that the number of households in New York City that are rent burdened is, is very high. And that's a problem we have to deal with. At the same time, we don't have enough new housing being produced. It's this, it's this problem where prior to the recession, we saw quite a few building permits being um, issued with the Department of Buildings. Um, certificates of occupancy are the papers that a, a property owner gets when um, the building is available for use, when it can be opened. So the light blue is certificates of occupancy. So that means when a building actually happens, when it's actually built and ready to open. So this, the dark blue is kind of like planned projects, and the light blue is projects that actually happen. And you see here, during the Great Recession, that the planned projects just totally tailed off. And then you have the certificates of occupancy following that, and that also decreasing. So we're at a time now where it's starting to pick up a little bit, um, but we're probably going to have a deficiency in housing supply for a little while. Um, limited supply of affordable units. So this illustrates the number of rental units in New York City available towards um, extremely low income and very low income households. Um, and those are the lower income spans of what I was talking about. Um, 424,000 units. Again, this does not include um, housing authority units. Um, and the demand we've measured to be 979,000 um, folks, households, looking for affordable housing in the city. Whenever we have a lottery for one of our developments in, in Manhattan, Brooklyn, you know, any, any borough, there's far, far more applicants for the lottery than there are units um, for the building. And so that just tells you the story of how the need is really substantial for affordable housing, the need and the demand. 
Um, and then, you know, to my last point, the population of the city is continuing to go up. Um, this is a projection to the year 2040, where we're, where we're projected to hit the 9 million um, people mark, which of course is the record highest for, for New York City. So population is continuing to go up. So the principles of the plan, the way that the plan is addressed, is really to address New York City's changing demographics. So people are changing the way that we, that we live. We have fewer kids. Um, in general, families are generally smaller, not every family is smaller, but in general, people are having fewer kids. There's more single people now, um, and people move around a lot more um, than they did historically, generally speaking, generally speaking, statistically speaking. Um, and so we need to be able, as a city, to respond to those new kinds of needs for housing. Um, we need to take a look at the process through which new housing is produced, the Department of Buildings, is involved. The Department of City Planning is involved in making approvals for different things. We have to look at that process and try to make it faster in some ways, but also still defend the public good, make sure we're still getting the reason why those processes were set up to begin with. Um, making economic diversity the cornerstone of housing development. So this is what I was talking about before, about creating neighborhoods, communities of a mix of incomes, because we've learned from the past, especially, what happens when you concentrate areas with one income type or, or another. And our goal here is really to create developments. I mean, we can't control what goes on in an entire neighborhood, but we can control what happens within a development, a city-sponsored development. And so the goal here is really to create a mix, um, an attractive mix. Um, so, using the city's tools and assets more efficiently and effectively. This really talks about city-owned land. Um, and many of you, you know, coming from Detroit, there's a lot of city-owned land. They need to, they have way too much land to ever even know what to do with. In New York, we do not have that problem. The city has now built in places like the South Bronx, Central Brooklyn, um, most parts of Queens. We don't have Northern Manhattan. We don't have the vacant land supplies that we did in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. You know, that's all been built on. Those are all communities now. So we need to think about the small amount of city-owned land that we have left and really figure out the best and most effective way to use it in order to accomplish our goals, not just for housing, but also for job creation. Um, and so we're trying to balance those two goals. Um, so strategically preserve past housing investments and lock in affordability in changing neighborhoods. Has anybody here ever heard of the Mitchell-Lama program? Yes. yes. So the Mitchell-Lama program was a program done in, in, I think it started in the late 60s. It was a New York State program. Um, and it was a program to build affordable housing, um, and it was a home ownership program. Um, and it was, it preserved that level of affordability. When people bought into a co-op that was a Mitchell-Lama co-op, you could only sell it at a, at a regulated rate. Well, that program has expired, um, and building owners, and you know, their cooperatives mainly, can decide now whether or not to stay in the Mitchell-Lama program and continue to have their units affordable, or they can decide to buy it out and go market rate. And so our goal at the Department of Housing Preservation and Development is to make it worth their while to stay in the Mitchell Lama program and to keep their units affordable and to come up with an agreement with us to maintain the affordability of their units. So that's what I mean when you hear HPD, um, Housing Preservation and Development, that's preservation. That's keeping affordable units affordable. Development is when we're building new stuff. Um, so stem the tide of deregulation and protect tenants. You do hear stories now of, especially in the neighborhoods that have gone crazy in the past few years, of landlords not maintaining their buildings um, in order to make the buildings unattractive for the people who live in them. That's illegal, and that's up to us to patrol and to enforce. Um, the fact that we have uh, strong markets gives us an opportunity. The real estate market now in New York is building back up. We have a real opportunity to catch that wave and take advantage of it and use the market for the public good. Um, 
And finally, last but not least, you all were talking just with the, with the councilwoman now about city budget allocations. This administration is allocating a substantial um, budget to affordable housing, and you should all be aware of that. Okay, so let me talk very quickly um, about how we will address all these things. Um, there's five general principles, and I'll talk about these a little bit more. So fostering diverse, livable neighborhoods. Um, really, our goal here is to pursue affordable housing in all boroughs. It's something that we see is a need in all boroughs, um, and it hasn't necessarily been thought of before in necessarily all boroughs, but it is something that we are, we are pursuing um, everywhere. Um, let's see. And so some of the goals, you know, I talked a little bit about the mixed income. That's very, very important to us to have a mix of incomes within a building, within a community, because we feel that that's what makes most successful communities and empowers people to be able to, you know, move up the economic ladder. And then I do want to enforce, my job is mainly about housing, but I do want to say that we're not blind to the need that people need some place to work. Um, and this is something that we have to balance um, together with the housing. Um, so preserving the affordability and quality of existing housing. Again, this is preservation part of HPD. Um, so first and foremost, we want to make sure that landlords are maintaining their housing in a decent um, in a decent way, that they're not um, coming by and fixing things and actually ripping out the kitchen. Or, you know, there's some horror stories about what some landlords um, have done. Um, and so it's our job to defend against that. Um, preserve government-assisted affordable housing. You know, I talked about the Mitchell Lama program. There's other programs as well, um, run by the state, city, and federal governments for moderate income affordable housing. Um, preserve rent regulated and unregulated affordable housing. So we make phone calls lots of times to property owners and we have um, programs to incentivize them to maintain affordable units. Um, some of those programs have other benefits. So for example, we have a program for property owners um, to, it's called the Green Communities Program where if they install um, like power efficient appliances, um, low water flow toilets and, and faucets um, that they're um, that they will get this benefit um, and then in exchange for that they will sign a contract with us to maintain affordable units for a longer period of time. Um, that relates to promoting sustainability, resiliency, um, and long-term affordability. Okay, building new affordable housing for all New Yorkers. Um, again, I've, I've said this a couple times now, ensuring that a wider range of New Yorkers benefit from our programs, not just very low income people, but you know, looking at people in other income bands. Um, we are looking at zoning um, and land use regulations. So zoning is the way that the city controls the amount of development that can happen on a property. Um, and so we can change zoning to change the size and shape of buildings and use of buildings actually too, we can change zoning in a manufacturing district. Um, and so we're looking at this because if we allow the zoning to allow bigger buildings, this facilitates more housing, then there's trade-offs to that. So those are all things that we, we have to um, Again, looking at the regulatory, um, the regulatory agencies, Department of Buildings, figuring out how they can move things a little bit faster. Um, and then, very important, um, what we call supportive housing, housing for um, homeless folks, senior, um, and folks that um, have disabilities. Um, and this is also part of our, our pipeline as well. And we do look for opportunities to you know, incorporate these special needs as well. <coughs> okay, and then I think this is, this is it. Um, refining city financing tools. So this really talks about ways that we can leverage federal funding, private funding, and city funding in order to create more and more housing. Um, and this is on the finance side of what it is that we do. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is build 200,000, build or preserve 200,000 units um, over the next 10 years. Um, the city investment um, contribution to this is 8.2 billion um, that's been committed. Um, 
This is a goal that's 60% preservation, 40% um, new construction. Um, and then we're targeting, like I said, um, different income groups um, in terms of which kinds of units that they're looking at. Um, so this illustrates, in terms of these 200,000 units, 60% um, would be preservation, 40% would be um, new construction. And these are the income bands that I talked about. You know, folks earning mainly between 38,000 and 95,000 for a family of three, um, in terms of the income groups that we're talking about. Um, okay, this mainly talks about um, different tools that we have, different funding sources that we can use. Um, and over the first year, um, we have started in calendar year 2014, started about 17,000 units towards this um, 200,000. Um, so we're above our first year goals. Um, we are looking at all of our developments when it says term sheets here, we're looking at the finances of it to broaden the range of incomes, like I said, trying to get to deeper levels of affordability. Um, we created what's called the Office of Neighborhood Strategies, which is where I work, um, because housing is really important that we talk and we you know, understand what's going on in terms of housing, and that's part of my role. Um, and then we're doing other things like um, trying to beef up our tenant harassment programs and make sure that we have clear support for folks who are having problems um, with their landlords um, and unable to address those problems. Um, we're looking at expanding the types of developers that are in the city. Um, so many real estate development firms are very large companies. We're looking at adding other smaller companies to develop housing, especially in smaller sites. Um, okay, I mean, I think that's, that's pretty much it. You know, I want to close here with this quote from the mayor, you know, that, the, that you know, it really reinforces his philosophy that, um, that Great people come from every single neighborhood, not just one neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important for us that we provide the resources for everyone um, in order to be able to reach their full potential. Um, so I think that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.